welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now today we are going to take a look at a very exciting astrological event. I'm very excited about this particular shift. I've been going into it today. I've been preparing my uh, notes about this and really looking into it. I'm so excited about this transit. I really think it's going to be fantastic. It is the shift of Rahu and Ketu into Gemini and Sagittarius. And I did get to have a little bit of a look uh, at, say, for example, the Ketu-Saturn conjunction and what's going on there. So I have had a look at the Ketu end of things. But when we look at the Rahu end of things, this is very exciting. So there are some dates that I'm going to go into. The first set of dates, these are mean node dates. Now I've consistently, over the course of doing this channel, I've always been quoting true node dates. I do use true node and it's really interesting. There are three different types of node that we can use. There's the true node, there's the mean node, and then there's the interpolated true node. And I'll talk you through all of these. I've got two sets of dates for you here for this transit. Mean node dates, we've got 7th of March 2019 to the 23rd of September 2020. A lot of people are using those dates. I've also equally seen a lot of people using these dates, which this is the date that I use, and that is the 23rd of March 2019 to 19 September 2020. Now some of you might be wondering why do we have two sets of calculations? And I thought I'd put together a little diagram for you guys so that you'll be able to see. So I'm going to put the sun here, I'm going to put the earth here, and we're going to have a look at, okay so that is the moon's orbit. Right, so we've got one of my handy little diagrams. I love doing diagrams, it's so much fun. So we've got the sun here, and we've got the earth here, and the earth does this orbit around the sun, okay? So it's a really big orbit all the way, and I can't draw the whole thing. It doesn't fit on this little whiteboard that I've got, but we can see, maybe I'll curve that a little bit so that you get a feel for the curve the curvature of the ecliptic plane there. We've got the moon here doing its orbit around the earth. Now the points Rahu and Ketu are formed by the two ecliptic planes intersecting. Okay, And that's how we get Rahu Ketu. Interestingly Rahu is more towards the sun, Ketu is more in the darkness. That's one of the ways that I see Rahu Ketu, but still the connotations of Rahu Ketu being kind of smoky and cloudy is very true. They are just mathematical points in the sky. And even though Rahu is more in the light, it's the kind of light that if you try to, to catch it, you know, or, or catching the nectar or something like that, you know, you end up with a handful of nothing kind of thing. So that's why Rahu can be tricky. That th These are some of the connotations with Rahu and Ketu. So we see that the, the ecliptic plane cuts here and then you get these points, Rahu and Ketu. Now what's happening with true node, if you were to put the moon here, as I understand it, or the moon here, you could get true node points. But what happens is the motion as the moon goes around the earth is actually quite wavy in nature. And it's really interesting. In India, they would say that the rabbit is, the moon is like a rabbit. It bounces across the sky. And all planets have some kind of lilting motion yeah. as they make their transits on ecliptic planes, but the thing is that the moon has quite a bit of a bounce to it. So you end up getting mean node calculations because the motion is averaged out. The interpolated true node is something that Ernst Wilhelm has come up with and he has that programmed into Kala software, which I do not use. I use Parashara's Light 
uh, which gives only the option of true or mean node. And interpolated true node is in his software, which basically features the true nodes, these true nodes, and then he'll average out the motion, uh, that, that bouncy kind of motion around the earth. So I thought I'd just go into that to talk a bit about all these different ways of calculating dates because I do find this really interesting and I like to try, try and visualize these things as I work because it really helps me to, to analyze things better. Um, in terms of true node or mean node, I mean, look, we can see a great big difference here and I know that this is concerning, disconcerting for some people. I appreciate that. Um, for the purposes of this video and for the purposes of what I'm doing here, talking about a year and a half in a very general sort of a way um, for each sign, in, in a very, very general sort of a way, I think it's okay that we have different dates like this floating around. Uh, I think it's perfectly fine. In my head, the way I'm kind of seeing it, I'm kind of seeing it that it's April onwards. Right, so that's how I'm going to take this transit. I know April onwards for a year and a half, the energies will be as we're about to see. Um, but in terms of, you know, there's a discrepancy of many, many days. And yes, it's disconcerting. And what I wanted to say here is that if I'm working on your personal chart, then I do a lot of work with an individual to try and get their 16 Varga charts as, cl as close as we can get. So I will work with the D60, I will work with you personally, and I'll ask a lot of questions to try and refine things and get your Rahu Ketu axis as exact as we can. And when we're working with the D60, we're working within a space of about two minutes. So here we've got a discrepancy of 7th March to 23rd March, and that's really big. Uh, but I think for a general overview reading, it's, it's fine. I, I'm okay to just carry on um, for the purposes of this exercise. So I thought I'd get into some technical stuff right up at the start. Uh, let's take a look at the meaning, though, which is the part that I'm really fascinated by. And this is my favorite bit. My favorite bit with astrology is... The symbolism and what sits where, who goes where, and you know, I, I, I see astrologers talk about, you know, oh, we're five seconds of arc off and, and things like that, and and you know, or, or this, and, and I love all that too. I love the science behind it and the calculations, but um, truly, I love just just getting into getting into discovering and unearthing and uncovering and analyzing the meanings behind everything that's that's my favorite bit so how about we take these true node dates because I do use true node and I know um, there are many professional astrologers out there who use true node very comfortably uh, and I'm one of them I, I'm I've been very happy with true node um, yeah, I've got a note here that see, I'm okay to use true node unless it's chart rectification or, and this is another instance, if I'm working with a person who comes to me who was born quite some time ago, um, it's an older person's chart, and if they give me a time of 6 a.m., that's warning bells. That's when I know that I've got to do some rectification here. I have to check this time out because, you know, 6.30 I don't worry about, but 6 a.m., is a bit oh okay this is this is a very round figure so I will definitely dig into the calculations there let's take a look at the meanings now in a, in a sort of general way uh, as to how this is working so Rahu was previously in Cancer the house of home and I was thinking about this because I, I do travel quite a bit. I, you know, each year I'll usually do a trip home and that's very normal for me. I love traveling and um, it's really, really interesting. For the last two years, I haven't gone anywhere. I've just been at home. I have not flown anywhere. I haven't gone anywhere. Uh, and I was thinking about that today and as I was putting my notes together and I thought, 
that's really bizarre for me to not fly anywhere. And it clicked in my head. I just went, ah, oh, Rahu's been in cancer. Right, no wonder I didn't go anywhere. I, I've basically been grounded for this whole time. And it's really interesting because when this shift happens, I believe I will be doing some travel and you will be coming with me. I can't wait to take the camera and do some, you know, outdoor stuff in some different locations. So we'll hit the road together and we'll have a really good time. So uh, I know there's definitely some travel coming up for me. As I go through your little mini readings, there may well be some travel coming up for you. But I think across the board, this is good for travel. And I even wonder, will travel agents over the next year and a half notice more people traveling? Because we've got Gemini and Sagittarius active in quite a big way. It's very exciting. So I think that there could be a lot more travel just generally, globally. Uh, so we're shifting to Rahu being in Gemini, which is Mercury. He does great. In Mercury so that's why I'm really excited about this transit I'm excited about this transit for all of us as individuals I haven't really gone into this in terms of the collective too much this time uh, I'm, I've really kept it all quite based around the individuals so so yeah so Rahu definitely likes being in Mercury uh, you know he does great in Gemini and Virgo so that's fantastic we're shifting to Ketu being in a Jupiter house. This is also good. This is, this is also very good in many ways. Uh, and I did cover um, Ketu and Saturn together. So if you'd like to see more, I'll possibly link to that below. I'll figure out a way to link to that. So if you haven't seen that one, you can check that one out. Or I might put the link at the end. So I will look at linking that video in. Uh, here. I've also got to note that you know one of the overall themes, one of the overall symbolic themes, how we could see this transition is that it's all about purpose meets practicality. So purpose of course being the Jupiterian side of things where Ketu is and practicality uh, where Rahu is in Mercury, in a Mercury sign there. So it's really exciting. I'm excited about the practical bit because uh, you know there's a lot we can we can achieve. So I thought I would do another little analogy for you and it's another whiteboard moment and this is where I get symbolic and creative and it might be cheesy but I'm willing to go there because if it helps the the excitement of this transit I, I will do anything to help make this more exciting because I had a thought this morning and that was that this is like uh, catching a bus and I'm going to draw this out so where are we going we are well we ideally want to go to Victoria but Covent Garden and I'm going to put Oxford Circus whoops Oxford I'll just put Oxford there we go Oxford Circus oh I'll put the full thing right this is like we're going on a bus ride we're going to catch the Rahu bus. But before I explain, I'm here in embankment and I know I want to get to Victoria. And I'm going to make up a number. If you're coming to London, please don't ignore all of this, what I'm doing here, because it's entirely made up. So I'm going to make up a number and I'm going to call it the number 73 bus. There we go. And it goes from embankment to Victoria. And it does the same circle again and again and again and again. And it's up to me to go to the bus stop and embankment, right? Because it does this transit, right? You've heard this term, transit buses. It's a very famous term. And it's a transit bus and it just keeps doing the same circle again and again and again. And it's up to me to turn up at embankment and it's up to me to get my wallet out and have my bus pass ready. It's also up to me to flag down the bus, right? And then I have to get on the bus 
I know this is long and drawn out, but it's good. Stay with me. And then I'm on the bus and I can enjoy this amazing ride. And I go through Covent Garden and I see the Opera House and then I go through Oxford Circus and I see all the beautiful shops. And then, and then as we're coming down to Victoria, I see Pall Mall and the fancy cars and Hyde Park and it's beautiful. If I didn't get on that bus at Embankment, I would have missed the entire ride. And where I'm going with this is that we all have an opportunity and it's cheesy, I know, but just let's, let's do this. It's fun. Come on. We all have an opportunity to catch the Rahu bus and we all have an opportunity to go somewhere different. We all have the opportunity to take our lives somewhere new over this year and a half. So where do you want to go? Right? It's good to know where you want to go. Okay, and that's getting practical, isn't it? We need to get a little bit practical. We need to think, what's my destination? Where do I want to be in a year and a half? And this is a great transit. This is a good bus to get on because Rahu loves being in Gemini. He loves this area. He does well here and he doesn't do well everywhere. He does well in three, six, three, six and 11. And I think some people say 10 and 11, but I'm pretty sure... It is 3, 6, and 11, and I'm going to confirm that. Oh, I haven't got my little thingy up there, but I'm pretty sure that's right. If it's not right, I will put something on the screen. But I know he loves being in Gemini. We've got to get on the Rahu bus. That's what I'm saying. And in order to get on this Rahu bus, it takes conscious effort. As I said, when I flag down the I have to flag down the bus. And in London, if you don't, they just go straight past you. They don't care because there are so many coming to a, one particular stop. So we have to put effort. We have to get on. And with this Rahu Transit, it is going to be like getting on a bus. You will have to put effort into this. It is going to take effort to capitalize on this energy, right? And it's not, we're not talking a huge amount of effort. We're not talking kind of Saturnian effort or, but even Saturnian effort, I don't, think that the universe wants us to do too much effort, right? And this bus analogy is good because that's about the level of effort that's needed. You've just got to get up. You've got to, you know, a lot of life is about getting up, showing up, smiling, being there on time, you know? And then someone once told me that. She said, and it was such a weight off my shoulders. I was going for this interview and she said, look, if you turn up and smile, you're 50% of the way there. And I thought, yeah, that's good. And I thought, I like that. And I think the same for this transit. It's kind of like we can get on this Rahu bus and in a year and a half, our life can be very different. But it will take effort. It will take showing up every day. And it will take consciously kind of making the effort towards your goal. So towards your destination, you've got to have some idea of where you want to be in a year and a half. And I like this because a year and a half is not too long and it's not too short. It's a really good time frame to achieve stuff and make a difference and be turning your life around in some way or heading in a better direction or, you know, um, yeah, I've got this note here. You can look back and see real change. I don't know, yeah, it takes conscious effort to get on that Rahu bus every day. It, it really will do. Or you'll be stuck with Ketu and Saturn, which has its benefits, but it's not as exciting as the Rahu bus. Exactly. I mean, if you miss that bus for a few days, it's fine. You'll be with Ketu and Saturn and, you know, experiencing a, a surge of awakening or restructuring in, in that area of your life. And that's cool. That's good as well. So it's not like you lose out if you don't hop on that Rahu bus. But I don't know, I like this idea. I, I really think we can, we can do something with this transit. And I really think that we can go from embankment to Victoria. And yeah, and I like Victoria. It's got way better cafes than embankment. So, you know, maybe I haven't been to embankment for a while, but um, that's what I've got in my mind. So another thing that we're going to need here is hands-on practical effort. 
Rahu in the third house. What do we have in the third house? We have our hands. We can use our hands. We can create things. I was thinking about that this morning, that, you know, when there's some work that you need to do, people say put your back into it. And what's happening in the back? The back has our will centers when it comes to the auric field. Um, the, and the will centers, we can use that energy. That's why um, Cheryl Sandberg's book is called Lean In. And that's really interesting because when you study the human aura system as Barbara Brennan teaches it, the will centers are all located in the back. And sometimes when people say you're going to work hard, they say put your back into it, which is really interesting. And when you put your back into it, it does push you forward. And her book is called Lean In. I find that so fascinating. That's another bit of kind of um, poetry of how this stuff all works and fits together. I mean, I'm pretty sure Sheryl Sandberg hasn't been to the Barbara Brennan School, yet she so beautifully calls her book Lean In which matches with all the energy stuff. I love finding these, these bits of um, symmetry and poetry in life. But here I'm kind of saying hands-on. So it's not putting your back into it. It's not a thing of will. It's just being hands-on in some way. So you're going to be more hands-on with your own life, right? Um, this is also an energy of becoming highly skilled, okay? So you can really skill up on something. You can become really good at something in a year and a half, which is very exciting. And I've got some notes here, how to catch the Rahu bus, Gemini. So Rahu, what, what to do, the, what, what you should do in order to catch this Rahu bus. Which, I, as I was thinking about it this morning as well, this idea, this catching the bus idea, I was thinking it's going to take conscious effort every day. Why is that? It will because every night when we go to sleep, our soul does a little journey. It goes somewhere else. And if you study the work of Dolores Cannon, she will tell you that your soul goes to the library where you can learn. It goes to the healing temple. Like there are all these cool places. I think it's in the astral plane or something like that where your soul goes. So I'm thinking, all right, it sounds like we're heading out of the solar system maybe when we sleep each night. So when we come back, we have to consciously want to get on that good transit every day, right? So it is a thing of, you know, you have to kind of come back to earth in a way and consciously get into your work or whatever it is that you're doing. It's really interesting. So, okay, what are the things to do for this how to catch the Rahu bus concept? Which is kind of cheesy, but I like it. Come on, it's cute. Uh, <laughs> What are the things to do? Number one, be hands-on. Be hands-on with your own life. You're creating, you're in the driver's seat. You're, well, gee, that's another analogy right there. No, I like to think that there's a bus driver and, and maybe I've got my journal while I'm sitting on the bus and I'm drawing something. I actually did know a graphic designer who used to create the most amazing designs while he was on the bus. He would come up with some of his best work there. And you know, when I think about that, actually, that makes perfect sense as well, because that is, that's movement. And this is that classic line by my favorite, favorite person of all time. And my goodness, it is the 19th. And yeah, sadly, he is, uh, he, he's, he's crossed. I'm gonna talk about him. I had a viewer actually say that he wanted me to do an episode on him, and I will, and it's Karl Lagerfeld, guys. And he famously said, ideas come while you work. I don't believe in sitting around waiting for information. That's a quote by him. And what's he talking about there? He's talking about movement. Now, I knew a designer who would design things on the bus, and he would come up with the best designs on Hi everyone, sorry about that, it got cut. It gets cut at the 24 minute mark, it tends to do that. But I think I had this diagram up and I think I was talking about a designer that I knew who would come up with his best ideas on the bus and he had like a half hour ride or something like that into North Sydney where we used to work at the time and he'd get out his Wacom graphics tablet, he'd have his Mac laptop, like he'd sit at the back of the bus and he would design and come up with great stuff. So what's that all about? Well, that's... Air, 
seventh, eleventh. These are the air signs, and we're going to have Rahu in the third house here. Very exciting. These are great, they're great communication houses. Uh, there's also money flowing through these houses. These are great houses, but definitely communication is a big thing that goes on in all three of them. And no wonder he would come up with ideas while he was on the go, right? So if you're feeling that you need to shake things up a bit, maybe you need a little trip somewhere, maybe you need to hop on a bus and, and just go somewhere different. Uh, I do that sometimes. Actually, I found it a lavender field not too far from where I am and that was really amazing um, that was a short bus right away so uh, let's take a look at this so how to get on this Rahu bus the Rahu do's well, I'm going to go through the Rahu do's and the Rahu don'ts so I'll probably make that the little skip ahead option I'll see when it comes time to making this but um, the Rahu do's be hands-on I think we covered that get practical learn the rules Mercury Mercury is a very rules based sign um, there's lots of rules there's lots of you know you're drawing the line you have to that's very Virgo drawing the line drawing the line and rules but it still applies um, even here with Gemini um, practical stuff so practical stuff filling in forms printing business cards publishing your wisdom online using technology right and there isn't anything more rules based than technology Rahu Mercury is a great um, tech combination, I tend to think. Uh, you know, Rahu being innovation, Mercury being rules-based. You look at the inside of a computer and it's if, then, this, that, you know, Boolean statements and ones and zeros and on and off and very rules-based. Uh, so what else have I got here? I've got that it's an excellent time for networking, great to collaborate with peers great time to um, collaborate with people in your field really important thing to do um, I've got a note here look at your peers you know how sometimes when you're creating something or you're you're in your little bubble and I do this I quite like being in my little bubble sometimes I don't look at what others are doing but it is important that we spend some time and look and see what the others are doing because sometimes when we compare ourselves, I know it can be a, a shortcut way to feel down about yourself. Uh, I'm very good at that. But when we look at others, we can be inspired, okay, and we can let new things come in. So it's really good to just sometimes just look, look at what other people are doing. That could be part of the activity of, of um, Rahu in this place. Study up on what others are doing, and it's studying your field. It's getting to know your area recognize that you can do similar things and that's what I always do I generally I, I get inspired when I look at peers and I see so many people doing amazing amazing things and to me that just encourages me it makes me think brilliant maybe I could do that too one day so that's really the attitude to take there uh, collaborate with friends and peers um, also let's not forget the light-hearted energy of Gemini right don't forget to have a laugh with your friends you know, um, don't forget to have a good time. There's the energy of travel. There's movement. It's time to go places. I'm really feeling that strongly. I'm really feeling that, you know, that the concept of movement, the concept of I just want to get on a bus and I want to go somewhere new and different. And, yeah, I think that time has come, guys. Rahu don'ts. I've only got a couple of don'ts here. Oh, it looks like there's three don'ts. Be careful with what you say really really important just be careful what you say if you can say less say less right um it's a kind of across the board but i'm going to go specific in a moment but um yeah be careful with what you say especially in relation to peers and siblings be careful you know just um don't start any arguments or say anything hurtful or try to avoid that um but i mean you've got to express your truth so you'll figure it out uh, ease any frustration with playtime. Don't forget to play. Now, ease any frustration. What's that about? Yes, there can be frustration here. Why can? Why would there be frustration? Because we've got Ketu Saturn 
to deal with and there could be frustration. You're all excited with all this concept of catching the Rahu bus and we're going somewhere new and this is going on and that. I get it. I, I'm excited too. But equally, we may have times where things are just really slow. There's nothing we can do. We have to stop. We have to, you know... Um, and that's the thing about creative energy and it can be hard because you've got a, a backlog of ideas you've got thousands of ideas coming in and I get this I, I've got so many ideas and you know for one reason or another I, I can't proceed with them because the timing's not right or I have a bunch of other things to do or whatever with Rahu in this place, we can get some frustration, okay, because we're very excited to, to run run in a field, run far, but, but you know, we've got Ketu and Saturn and that could be causing um, us some delays or, you know, things might feel a bit stop-start. There's also the lofty ambitions of Jupiter. Um, there can be that too, that, that, you know, Jupiterian visions and ambitions are really, really big. Uh, and then the mundane thing of having to do them, that can be frustrating. Um, there can be some issues happening with that. But guys, I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get into the moon signs. I'm going to take a look per moon sign. So this will be the bit where you can click below uh, and just watch your bit. So, And of course, feel free to look up on behalf of your family members or your partner or we all do that don't we we all have a little look at you know what's going on for the people in our lives too so you can definitely do that if you would like so we're going to start with Aries moon Aries moon you have got a lovely thing going on here because you've got just the sweet simplicity of having it straight up Rahu in the third house Gemini and Ketu in the ninth house Sagittarius you got the real deal here so you feel like you want to work hard and things should likely go your way yes yeah I think this would be a good thing I think Rahu in this place is great you're gonna capitalize off this and hopefully a year and a half later you'll be able to look back and see wow I got on the Rahu bus and I went somewhere different with my life um Things should largely go your way, absolutely. And siblings and friends can be of help to you. This is a really good time to be working with them. Okay, doing the ninth, this is also nice. This is also a good thing. It's good for travel. So Aries Moon, I hope you enjoy this transit. Lucky you. Taurus Moon. Taurus Moon, you've got this happening. You've got second house Rahu and you've got an eighth house Ketu going on. So what do we have here? Uh, yeah, I mean, this This is good. This is to do with your finances, and if you watched the K through Saturn conjunction, I probably would have said something about restructuring of finances, and yes, this, this theme is continuing here for you. Um, it can be really good in terms of your speech. You can, you have the potential and the ability to really... Um, shape things going forward with your speech people should hopefully listen to you there, there'll be some nice energy here you can yeah definitely this is really nice for you speech wise um there's also this thing of like money could come in from other sources this could be a good time to work on your finances and improve them if you're in debt this might be a time you want to try and get out of debt uh, as well possibly um, and especially if money comes in from other sources or unexpected places or things like that, you know, use that to pay off your debts, definitely. This is a time for you to be watching out for your health. I don't see anything bad happening with your health, nothing like that, but just um, take it easy. You might feel tired now and then easily. Um, that can happen due to Kethu's position. Uh, and the other thing would be to keep your spending in check. But this is really nice for you, especially when it comes to speech, Taurus Moon. You have the power to potentially transform your world through your speech. So this is very exciting. And it could be a time where you become a very good speaker. So um, I wish you well with that, Taurus Moon. Now we have Gemini Moon. 
Gemini Moon, this is happening for you in your first house, first house Rahu and seventh house Ketu. Okay, so now this is not this is not an ideal transit. Uh, it's not bad. There's nothing bad with it, but the the place where it's ideal is in terms of your health, in terms of your physical body. Um, you know, you might just feel a bit tired now and then, a little bit run down. Um, may not have as much energy type thing. There's nothing bad, um, you know, and I know people very well who run this through their birth chart, you know, and uh, they're very energetic people, but they might need to just chill out a bit now and then. And you might need to chill out a bit now and then, okay? So if you heard my intro and you're really inspired by the, ooh, Rahu in the third and I'll be able to do all this stuff, Yes, you can and do, do go out, do catch the Rahu bus, do, you know, crack on with your plans and do the really exciting stuff. Just balance it, okay? Just balance it with rest and relaxation and looking out for your health. And there is also with your spouse as well, just there to be balanced. It, it's just that. So... That's how I'm seeing it for you, Gemini Moon. Now, Cancer Moon. We're going to take a look at Cancer Moon. Uh, we've got 12th house Rahu and 6th house Ketu. So now this is really good for your Ketu. This is fantastic. Um, so you should be making some progress and headway career-wise, which could be really good for you. But with Rahu in the 12th house, you might need... To relax and you might need to get away you might need to take a trip somewhere and the kind of trip you take might be purely for relaxation and uh, I don't know if you're like me I actually find it hard to do that I, I quite like to have a purpose with my travel or, or you know go places and, and do things but this is looking like you could just really just get away and and have some nice time out uh, quite good for spirituality as well, enhancing your spirituality too. Keep your spending in check, right? That is a tip for you, Cancer Moon. Um, that would be a good thing to do if you can. So Leo Moon, what's happening for Leo Moon? Leo Moon, we have 11th house Rahu and we have 5th house Ketu. Now, this is really good for you. Yeah, this is really nice. Ah, Ketu's not so great, okay, Ketu's not so happy, but Rahu, I tell you what, Rahu can bring in really good gains, 11th house Rahu, absolutely, um, you could expand your professional network, so that's fantastic, they say your network is your net worth, I covered that in one of my old videos, uh, I covered the astrology of that statement in one of the old videos, um, your image and status at work could really go up at this time. So you can really work this Rahu energy. I really like this for you. Travel can be good too with this Rahu as well. The only thing about Ketu, Ketu is not having the best of moments and you can watch my Ketu Saturn to have a look at more. Uh, but uh, the other thing that's connected with Ketu is that your expenses could potentially be a bit higher. But, um, but that's nothing too major, and especially if you're bringing in these big gains. That should be okay. So Virgo Moon, let's take a look at Virgo Moon. Virgo Moon, we have a 10th house Rahu and we have a 4th house Ketu. Uh, this is looking good for your career. Your Rahu is looking good, yes. Yep, expanding career success, absolutely. Uh, and I've got a note here, go for it. Yeah, when it comes to career, absolutely go for it. The only thing though is that your mother's health may provide some challenges and the domestic scene, it's like you might have to be at home for whatever reason. If you tuned in to my Ketu Saturn, there was someone had put a comment actually and they'd said something about, oh, you can't do a Virgo moon, no, you can't do a um, home business or something like that. I mean, look, this is the thing, if your mother's health or for whatever reason you need to be at home more, you know, you might need to work things so that you do work from home. The idea here is that Rahu is great for expanding your career success, so go for it. Like, keep going with the career, because that's Rahu's keen to do that, 
and and you can. Um, if you needed to balance that out or work from home, I think that's probably what I was seeing. But you're very welcome to to have a look at that key do satin video if you'd like to. Uh, let's take a look here. Libra Moon, Libra Moon. What have we got going on? Ninth house Rahu and third house Ketu. Okay, this is looking good. Great. Oh, this is, you've got the best scene going on here, Libra Moon. I'm telling you, I haven't, I haven't said that for anyone else. I'm saying it for you though. Uh, I, yeah, I do think you've got it best because it's kind of working both ways. And this is really good. So Aries has got it pretty good. You've got it very good. So this is great for travel. This is great for higher education. Great for spiritual studies. Great for pilgrimages. If you want to go somewhere, if you want to book an Eckhart Tolle workshop or go on an Abraham cruise or whatever it is, you know. Maybe you want to go to the pyramids. I don't know. Uh, do something like that. Do some kind of, kind of travel that you'd like. Um, good for... Financial gains, Ketu, this is great. Yeah, no, this is this is really nice for you, Libra Moon. So hopefully you feel that effect. Hopefully you feel that effect like the window is opening and there's fresh air coming in and you're going on a trip and something new is happening. I think you're really going to feel that, Libra Moon. I've got one tiny little note here. Be careful of how you speak to your co-workers. That's my tiny note. So, yeah. Scorpio Moon, let's take a look for you. Scorpio Moon, we've got 8th house Rahu and we've got 2nd house Ketu. So, so kind of similar to the Taurus Moon, um, you want to be keeping your spending in check. Money could come in from other sources, other people, you might discover money somehow. I don't know, but there might be some discovery of money, which would be great. Uh, good time to keep an eye on your health and definitely be careful how you speak. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, there is this thing of other working with other people and, and family and in-laws. You know, maybe that will offer some nice um, stuff there. And maybe you could travel with the in-laws as well type thing. There could be some really nice things in here for you. So I'm quite liking that Scorpio moon. Sagittarius moon. Uh, we've got a seventh house Rahu and a first house Ketu. This is really a time, yes, and I do believe, if I remember correctly, you're in Sadisati, aren't you? This is a time to take it easy. This is a time to take it easy with this transit. Rest, relax, chip away at your goals slowly, a little bit every day, an hour or two every day. Don't push yourself. Relax. Nurture yourself. Really learn the art of true rest master that you know I'm trying to get better at at truly resting I found it really hard to sleep last night there was a full moon I found it nearly impossible to sleep the light was pouring in it was this silvery white light I could have read a book it was just amazing um so I couldn't sleep so I was trying I was lying down I was kind of going okay master the art of relaxation it wasn't working but I'm certainly trying Sagittarius moon I wish you well uh, we're going to have a look at Capricorn Moon. Capricorn Moon, what have we got here? We've got 6th house Rahu and 12th house Ketu. I'm just going to check the time quickly. I'm going to have to move along very quickly. Uh, this is good for you, especially work-wise. Property matters, legal matters. This is good. Oh, yes, it's great. Rahu loves being in the 6th. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Ketu is fantastic for spiritual development. Absolutely great to get away from it all look work's going to be going great and if you need to recharge your batteries do a little getaway okay it's, it's going to be like that i think your work is going to going to do really well i think it's fantastic capricorn moon uh aquarius moon let's take a look for you fifth house rahu and 11th house ketu so we've got here rahu great for business oh this is lovely yeah this is really really nice aquarius moon and you could do with some of this couldn't you because i tell you what aquarius moon is it aquarius moon maybe it's someone else i don't remember no but well we, we could all do with this this is a good one this is you know great for business great for making money from your creativity um great for starting a business if you want to start a business, great for making gains. Ketu is really happy in this position. So, 
really, really good. I mean, look, Rahu in the fifth, there can be some worries, there can be stress, there can be tension. Uh, you know, Rahu may not be all perfect, but Keith is doing fantastic there in the 11th. So it's a really, really good transit. And Pisces Moon. Pisces Moon, we've got 4th house Rahu and 10th house Ketu. Now for you guys, um, yeah, you're going to want to be careful with this transit a little bit. Uh, be careful regarding property matters. Be careful regarding your mother's health. Be careful regarding your home, where you live. Um, and business-wise, you're going to need to put in some consistent effort to keep that business going. So it's a bit of a stretch for you, but there will be other transits in between that will be wonderful that you can capitalize from. So look, I mean, if ever there is a transit that isn't quite ideal for you, you can always look in the sky and find some other planet. You can always find another bus to catch, right? Maybe you want to catch that Jupiter bus or maybe you want to get on the Venus bus or something like that. There is always, always something exciting going on in the sky and there's always something that you can do. So guys, I'm going to wrap this up. I really hope you've enjoyed this little overview, this very brief overview of the Rahu Ketu axis shift. If you would like to know more about how any of the transits of this year or the upcoming years, or if you would like to know anything more uh, to do with your specific chart, then please get in touch with me. Um, you're very welcome to book me for a reading. I absolutely love doing this work. So um, yeah, and if you have a look at my website, you'll see that there's all kinds of different session options and they range in all different kind of prices as well. So um, you can definitely take a look. But I want to thank you so much for stopping by and I look forward to seeing you next time.